you everybody <laughs> all right today i pose the question why should hikers carry a compass okay so let's say for a minute um <clears throat> let's think about that for a minute okay if you're on a trail you're hiking on the trail you're going to stick to the trail okay that's not always the case even if brief short periods of time you leave the trail you can get lost in no time even the most experienced hikers okay so I'm going to read a little story right here that I have pulled up on my phone. Uh, it happened in 2013, but this uh, missing hiker, was her, her body was found in 2015, two years later, okay, if I remember right. But, uh, we're going to go out in the woods and practice some of these principles that can avoid this happening, okay. Uh, but I'm going to read the story first. It may bore you a little bit, but I don't know if you've heard this or not, but the story's like, you know, it came out like three years ago. Uh, sometimes out of tragedy, we can learn things. Okay, so. Missing hiker later found dead kept a journal of the ordeal. Okay. There's her picture. It was a 66-year-old uh, Geraldine L L Largay. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hold on, i got to get my glasses. <laughs> I'm old as dirt, so I have to wear glasses to read. All right. <clears throat> An Appalachian Trail hiker whose remains were discovered last year survived at least 26 days after getting lost. She kept a journal of her ordeal and ultimately resigned herself to the idea that she was going to die and it could be years before her remains were located. Okay. So, she was already in panic mode and she didn't think that she was going to make it out. Geraldine Largay, who was from Brentwood, Tennessee, hiked to higher ground in a failed attempt to get a cell phone signal and text messages sent to her husband went undelivered documents show. When you find my body, please call my husband George and my daughter Carrie. Largay, who was 66 years old, wrote in a page that was torn out of her journal. So she, she left a specific note. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead where you found me, no matter how many years from now? Okay, they're talking about how they've released 1,500 documents. Uh, Largay, and this is the important part of the story, Largay, who went by the nickname Inchworm, got lost after leaving the trail on July 22, 2013 to relieve herself and set up her final camp the next day. Okay, now how many of you, <clears throat> how many of you had to step off the trail to go use the bathroom, okay? You can get turned around in two seconds. Let's say if it's a busy trail and you want to go off a little way so you're not seen, okay? Another thing is if you want to go off, maybe if you got a hammock, you want to find the right trees or you don't want to get caught hanging a hammock <laughs> where they're not allowed or you just want to camp away from everybody, you can get turned around in two seconds. And that's evidently what had happened to her. She got turned around. After she missed a rendezvous with her husband, he reported her missing on July 24, 2013, setting off a massive search by the Maine Warden Service and other agencies. Documents indicate they interviewed dozens of witnesses and conducted several searches over two years. Okay, the last entry in Largay's journal was on August 18, 2013. Okay. Her husband, George Largay, told Warren, wardens that the Appalachian Trail journey from Georgia to Maine's Mount, Kate, I think Kata of something, Katadin, Katadin, was a bucket list item for his wife. She had started with a traveling camp companion, but the other hiker left the trail because of a family emergency. Okay, so she was now by herself because the other hiker had left. Okay, the property where, let me see now. Oh, it wasn't until more than two years after she went missing in October of 2015 where her remains were found. Okay, They were discovered 3,000 feet from the trail by a contractor conducting a forestry survey on property owned by the U.S. Navy in Reddington Township. Okay, she was 3,000 feet from the trail. Okay, It's a little over a half a mile. All right. If she'd have known what direction to go, she could have walked in the right direction if she would have had a compass. She probably didn't have a compass. If she was an experienced hiker and she had a compass, I think she would have, she could have used it to track where she was. But then again, she might have been so experienced that she just didn't really, it didn't register how easy it is to get lost. Especially, you know, oh, the trail's just right over there, you know. 
a lot of people think that way when they're on a trail. They have the security of thinking that the trail's nearby. <clears throat> Largay's tent was collapsed and her body was inside. The medical examiner determined she died of starvation and exposure. The items found with her included trail staples such as toothpaste, baby powder, first aid kit, cord twine, a pencil, a pen, a paper, a trail map. The battery on her cell phone was dead, but investigators were able to retrieve the data. All right, now, <clears throat> I've read several stories about this. This is not the only story that I have read. And uh, basically, she couldn't get, she had her cell phone and she couldn't get the signal out. And nowhere in any of the stories did I personally read that she had GPS or a compass. And like I said, a lot of hikers and backpackers don't carry a compass because they don't think it's necessary because you're on a trail. Okay, so I'm going to show you the methodology on why you should. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of portray a little bit of the scenario and, 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 and show you how this can happen, how you can get lost. And even if you're not good with a compass, just carry one and just learn basic compass skills. And I'm going to show you the methodology on how you get lost. Once you get lost, what to do about it. Okay. Now, before we hit the woods and I show you my method of how to become unlost, let's take a look at just a couple of compasses. Okay. Because uh, I want to kind of go over, I will go over a few basics on the compasses. Okay. The reason for me to do a compass video without me actually talking about compasses and telling you what you should carry and shouldn't carry. Okay. Now, these stupid little cheap compasses right here, like this, the kind that's on keychains and the kinds of on whistles and the kind that they put in them stupid survival kits and those uh, ends of knives. I hate these compasses. I despise them. They're cheap. They're, they're not accurate. They're not reliable. Uh, <clears throat> these bubbles, the liquid with the bubbles, I don't like these things. Uh, just my opinion if you want to carry them and get lost in the woods that's your problem but <laughs> my advice and my opinion is uh bubbles belong in your shampoo they don't belong in a compass <laughs> i don't like those don't use them there's no excuse there's no reason to use them so let's start out with bare bones cheap as cheap as you can go which i think is still okay this is just a general map compass i call it a map compass the technical name most people i think call it a base plate compass but this is an el cheapo from walmart i think it was like six bucks and uh, it's a needle type compass and this is like a thousand times better than this so at the bare minimum at least carry something like this okay now if you want to go up a step this is a really good compass this is a brunton true arc three okay this is a very good compass all right um this thing here it's a also a base plate compass and I believe this thing goes for somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 bucks. Okay, this is a very tough compass. This is a good compass, and it's so cheap that if you want to carry a really expensive compass, this I recommend is a good backup compass. You know, now another one. This one's about 20 bucks. This is not a uh, not what you really call a base plate compass because you can't see through it. These kinds like here, you can sit on the map, and they've got the scale on them for meters and miles and inches. But this is called a sighting compass. And that's simply because it's it's got the mirror in the back right there. And um, this is a Silva Guide 426. That's a good compass right there. I really like this compass right here. It's very nice. It's got your direction of travel arrows. It's got uh, north, south, east, west clearly marked. Very easy to use compass and rugged. Comes in a good case, okay? That is around 20 bucks right there, okay? Now, if you want to step up, this is a Sunto MC2. Look, stickers upside down. <laughs> this is a Sunto MC2 Global Compass. Okay, it's got a global needle. Okay, this is fantastic. It's got the the base plate with three different scales on it, meters and miles and in, inches and things, and it's got a, a the declination arrow to it, and then of course it's got the sighting mirror. Now this is the Sunto MC2 Globals between 60 and 80 bucks. And I think back when I got this, it was like a hundred bucks. I think they've come down a little bit, but this is just, this is a fantastic compass. It's a Mac Daddy of all compasses. Okay. So my advice, get one and carry it. Uh, please, I beg of you, don't, don't use these. I don't care how many people on YouTube tell you to use one of these or they add these stupid little things to their survival kits. All this does is create problems. Please don't use them. I'm begging you. If you have to, get a Walmart one. It's only six or seven bucks, okay? 
or a Brunt and True Arc. Okay, if you want to spend 13 or the Silver Guide 426 if you're willing to pay 20. Okay, either one of these are going to be good. All right, just my advice, my opinion. Uh, it's serious out in the woods. So let's hit the woods now and put some of my, I'll show you what I'm talking about, about using these. Right, today where we're going to be is we're at the Penhody Trail. All right, we're going to hit the trail and what we're going to do is we're going to try to see what it takes to get lost. And we're going to try to simulate what it is to be lost on a trail, off a trail. And then I'm going to try to show you my methodology on how if you do get lost, you can find your way back to the trail. But you got to have a compass, okay? Can't rely on your instincts. Just ain't going to happen. <laughs> you also got to have a trusty cameraman. Yeah, have a trusty cameraman like Nick with you. Nick's with us today. Oh, I forgot to get you to get, do, give the, the hey -o. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Nick's with us today. So, all right, we're here. Let's hit the trail and let's see if we can get lost. Woohoo! All right, so we're up here and we are walking on the trail. Okay, we don't have a care in the world. We're not worried about anything. We're experienced hikers. We're on the trail. We're having a merry old time. Woo! <laughs> Nick, act, act like act like you're excited. <laughs> nature all right so here we are now we're hiking along the trail and we either have to go to the bathroom or we have to um make camp okay now i'm not going to tell you about the methodology that i use for leaving trail yet what we're going to do is we're just going to walk off trail okay so all right, see that over there, Nick? Yep. See that down tree? We'll just walk off into the woods. Let's turn this around. Can you see that down tree? I don't know if it's showing up on camera or not. Well, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave trail. We're gonna walk off, okay? We have excellent sense of direction. Not a problem in the world. So we're just gonna walk off the trail. <laughs> All right, so let's head All right, up. we're walking off the trail. We're just meandering off into the woods because somebody had to go to the bathroom or we're wanting to hang up a hammock illegally. <laughs> or we're just outright wanting some privacy. So, okay, we're off the trail. We're gonna set up camp here. No problem. We're gonna find our way out, okay, in the morning. So fast forward to where after we have slept and then we're gonna get up and we're gonna make our way out spent the night okay we have excellent sense of direction so we started walking now we haven't found the trail yet have we nope now how long was it how far do we walk off the trail let's say two three minutes yeah how long we've we been walking now about 10 minutes I'd say about 20 20 okay we're officially lost you have a okay. bad sense of time a bad sense of time <laughs> All right, so now we're officially lost. What do you do now, okay? You panic. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you panic. Yeah. Uh, you're right, that's what most people do, okay? Now, first off, the number one mistake we made is we didn't pay attention to what direction we left off the trail. You gotta pay attention to that, right? Now, the other thing is we don't have a compass, okay? That was a mistake. And then another mistake, if you think you can trust your sense of direction, which is fine and dandy, but I don't trust mine, is when you're walking off the trail, turn back and look and see how it looks from a perspective of the other way. Because when you walk in and you never look back, you don't know what it looks like, okay? So, now let's go through the methodology of what you're gonna do when you're actually lost. If you would have brought a compass, if you don't have a compass, I don't know what you're gonna do. <laughs> That's why, yeah, panic. That's why <laughs> I'm showing you my methodology, okay? So let's take a look and just try to remember this. <clears throat> In the summertime, it's called the 20, 20, 40, 80 method. In the summer, it's the 30, 60, 90, okay? And that's simply because there's so much more foliage and everything is so much more thicker than, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the 30, 60, 90 method, because as you can see, looking all around us here, there's there's not as much foliage. So what we're gonna do is 
uh, you would walk, the first time you would walk off trail would be 30 paces, okay? So let me show you how you get started on the methodology of how to become unlost. So the first thing you want to do, okay, we stepped off trail, we're lost, all right? First thing you want to do is you don't want to run wild in all different directions, okay? If you have a compass, which I do have, so let's pull this thing out, all right? I have a compass. And incidentally, I want to say something that I've kept it in my pocket down there because this shirt has got these little magnetic flaps. See right here. Mm -hmm. It's got a magnetic flap. There it goes. Hear it? You don't want your compass near that. Pay attention to that. A lot of these shirts have that. All right. So the first thing that you want to do now is here, pull that orange vest out of my side pocket right here. Unzip it and pull it out. The first thing you want to do is you want to establish where you're at. Because if you can't make it out of there, then you want to be able to make it back to where you were originally lost. Because where you're originally lost is not necessarily, not necessarily that far away. Okay. Oh, another good thing, carry a whistle. Instead of screaming into your horse, you can just whistle. Okay. Plenty loud enough, instead better than screaming. Now back to the methodology, okay? You're establishing where you are at the point you discover you're lost. Take something brightly colored like your vest and hang it on a shirt. Right. So I'm gonna hang this on a tree here and I'm gonna zip it up so that it doesn't fall off. This is my base point. This is where I originally got lost from, okay? Now, I could just stay out here wandering circles. I could die, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna give up, okay? Because I'm equipped with a compass. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this compass and I'm gonna find north, okay? Now it's facing north. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna turn it to where my arrow is north. All right, there's north. And then I'm gonna turn it until it's facing north, okay? So now this is where the 30, 60, 30, 60, 90 comes in. This is the methodology. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the tree. Now when I make a pace, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head north, and when I start out on my left foot, every time my right foot hits the ground, that's a pace. And so what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna do is go north 30 paces and I'm gonna see if I run into the trail, okay? Twenty nine thirty. Okay, there you have it. I just went 30 paces and I'm not back on the trail, okay? Am I lost deeper in the woods? No, because I have a compass. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change my compass to my direction of travel is south. And now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna follow it back south because I'm gonna get back to the point of where I got lost, okay? That way I don't walk around in circles. I wind up right back where I was. All right, so what I have done now is I have gone back to the tree. This is where I got started. So you see, I'm still, wherever we left from the trail, I'm not that far off, okay? So, my first choice didn't work north, let's try south, okay? So now, I came back from north, so what I'm doing now is my, um, let's see right here. He's that down here, let me show you something. Are you on the compass? Uh, yep. Okay, right. now see what I did before is when I went in the other direction, I had my, my uh, direction of travel north. So what I'm doing now is I'm turning to my direction of travel south. So all I got to do is keep the needle lined up with north and follow south. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go 30 paces south and hopefully I'll hit the trail there. Okay. And 30. All right. I'm not back at the trail. I just went south 30 paces and I am not back at the trail. Okay. So, but at any point in time, you could wind up back on the trail, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put 
I'm going to change my direction arrow back to north, my, my, my direction of travel to north, and I'm going to turn around because I didn't find the trail, and I'm going to head back to the tree. Alright, so I'm back at the tree, and I think you're kind of starting to get sort of what I'm getting at. I have gone north, I have gone south, and I haven't found the trail, but I'm not further lost. I'm not further into the woods because I have established my baseline, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my compass back on north, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my direction of travel as west. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line up my north needle, and my direction of travel is west. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go 30 paces west. And like I said, if I hit the trail, the ordeal is over, okay? But for now, I'm going to try to go that way 30 paces. 30. All right. I've gone 30 paces now west, and I'm not at the trail, okay? If I was, I'd be safe, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my arrow my direction of travel to east and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go back 30. I think you're starting to get the basic idea now. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. So we're going to head back east. Oh, and I don't know if you heard that plane above, but uh, if it wasn't so overcast, you could signal them with a mirror if you had one. And if there was any sun, we could, but there's yeah. no sun. Because <laughs> it's overcast. All right. All right, so I'm back at the tree. Now, I had my direction of travel to east, so now what I go is 30 paces east. Now, there's no reason to continue going through this because I think you're starting to get the gist of it. Once you've established your baseline, okay, your point of safety, you're gonna go 30 paces north, 30 paces south, 30 paces east, now west, and then 30 paces east, okay? Now remember, at any point in time, you could find the trail, okay? This is your baseline. This is better than being lost in the woods for 26 days and dying, all right? It's a lot of work, but it's a way of getting out. Now, if at any time you have gone in all four directions and you don't find the trail, that's when you'll kick it up a notch to 60, okay? Start all over. Like I said, you're no more lost than you were. More than likely, the second go round, you're going to find the trail. 60 paces north, if that don't work, come back. 60 paces south, if that don't work. 60 paces west, 60 paces east. At any point in time, you can find the trail, okay? And then in, usually you will, okay, unless you've really wandered off, okay? The next thing, if you, get, if you, if you don't find the trail, come back to your baseline and make it 90, 90 paces, okay? And if you have to, that's the thing. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Geraldine, she didn't have a compass. She didn't know where to go. And so she wound up 3,000 feet off the trail. When you've got a compass and a baseline, you can continue doing your four-way navigation from the same spot, okay? Use paces, okay? You're guaranteed, especially, you know, if you've got some food, if you have to, if it, go, if it gets real ridiculous, you can really walk a long way, okay? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to run through real quick and show you, if you're going to leave the trail, how you should leave the trail with a compass. Okay? So let's do that. Alright, so what we're doing now is we're going to walk along, and this is how you're going to leave the trail. Okay, let's stop right here. Now, try to find a distinguishing feature like that big tree over there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull up my compass, and I'm going to turn it north. Okay? I'm going to turn it north. What we're going to do is we're going to head south. Okay, That's the easiest way of remembering it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go 30 paces off the trail uh, south. All right, And that's where we're going to camp for the night. Or go to the bathroom, whatever. All right? So, let's turn towards... i got to continue to hold the compass to where the needle's north. And we're going to head in that direction right there. We're going to head south 30 paces. I'm going to... I'm going to count the paces. Start out on your left foot. Every time your right foot hits the ground, that's a pace. One, two, three. So we're here now. This is, 
this is where we're going to make camp for the night okay now all i got to do is since we went south is tomorrow all we got to do is we're going to turn around look there's a good flat spot that would be a good oh, place yeah. for a camp <laughs> so anyway what we're going to do now is <clears throat> tomorrow we can sleep easy tonight we don't have a care in the world because we'll be able to get it out we'll be able to get out easily tomorrow okay so tomorrow let's say fast forward 24 hours <laughs> all right we have just turned this ways and all i'm going to do now is i'm going to put that back north kind of hard to do while i'm holding the camera put that back north to where the needles lined up north and we're going to travel north because yesterday we traveled in south okay and we can just kind of keep up with the paces to find out if we're going to be at the trail okay so one two 29 30 31 32 and we're back on the trail okay i see that ain't bad at all especially going uphill this is a very hilly area so all right we've got 32 paces we're back on the trail ready to head home that's all you got to do okay certain methodology 30 60 90 20 40 80 depends on how far off the trail that you want to go now there's one other thing that i wanted to show real quick okay that i can't explain why but let's take a look at a compass pouch real quick all right now one thing i want to add to this video real quick you know how to not get lost and you know how if you are lost uh how to get out now i want to see something here just for the heck of it this is one of those uh alice pack compasses a uh, compass pouch okay you keep your compass in it something that i have never understood with this thing is let's take a look at this aim down here on this compass can you see on this yep right there okay now i want to see something here for a minute i'm gonna turn this let's cut this on to right there let's turn this on to north okay now i'm aimed north now I'm going to show you something here. This metal Alice clip. Let's put this right here. And then let's take this and let's put, place this under it. And see if it affects it in any way. Woo! Look at that. 20. Oh, that's 40 degrees off. So it's got a magnet in it. Yep. That's because the magnetic comp compass is affected by this. Keep that in mind. Okay? If you have to remove this thing. Let's see if this button will affect it too. This is just something else to keep in mind. All right, can you see that? Now let's let's run this metal button up against it. There you go. It's full 20 degrees off. It's changing it. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Oh, let me cut this off. All right. Now pay attention to that. Uh, your compass being anywhere near metal. Uh, don't have it near metal. If you got like a metal bracelet on while you're doing it or a metal watch or if you've got a neck knife or anything or certainly if you have like one of these pockets that's got the magnetic enclosure on it okay pay attention to that always carry a compass there's no reason why you shouldn't carry a compass okay i hope this video wasn't in bo uh, too boring i hope it was very informative it's just something that i kind of wanted to throw out there because even if you don't know a whole lot about a compass this is a methodology that you can carry a compass and not get lost or if you do get lost you can find your way out okay we don't need to ever hear about any more cases like miss geraldine that's just an absolute tragedy we hike and we backpack for fun okay it shouldn't end that way so you got anything to add nick Mm, no nothing Are i'm ready hungry? for lunch lunch i knew it see i said it before you thought it <laughs> all right so hope you had fun hope you learned something hope you remember what i said i hope i came across clear with it and we shall see you in the next one see you later